Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Mesoon African Motives, uh, still on our power machines N5 revisions, uh, working on the calorimeters in this case. Uh, actually, we are going to see that we are going to be focusing with one and the same thing as long we are dealing with uh, calorimeters. It is the same concept also that you're going to see if you are working with uh, condensers, you're going to be working with one and the same thing so what you need is to understand how to attempt these typical questions for a different type of question that you might be given. Uh, I think we just have about three or four different types of questions that we can have uh, under uh, calorimeters. So we do not have much to consider there. So this is April 2023 exam uh, whereby we are given 3.1. A throttling calorimeter was used to determine the dryness fraction of steam uh, the following results were recorded. All right, so we are given a throttling calorimeter. In this case, that's a calorimeter. I don't know how you're going to take it, but that's a calorimeter. So we have got information before throttling and also the information after throttling in this case. So the conditions are going to be like this. Before throttling, we are going to be talking about uh, the steam that is uh, the wet steam that we are going to be having. Uh, actually, we start with water. Then after throttling, that is where we can have a condition. Maybe it's wet steam, or it can be a dry steam, or it can be a superheated steam. So taking on a conditions that we start before throttling, working with what? With water. We are going to have conditions at the end that can be taken depending with the type of steam that you're going to have at the end. All right, so here we are given the pressure and so forth and the specific heat capacity of superheated steam at constant pressure is. So the moment we are given the specific uh, heat capacity uh, the, uh, of superheated steam, it means the output after throttling in this case is a superheated steam. We are talking about the superheated steam at the output. That is the condition that we are given. While it's before throttling, we are talking about the steam being wet. So here we are talking about the wet steam. That is the steam that is wet. So it can start as a wet steam and end as a wet steam. There's a condition like that. It can start as a wet steam and end as a dry steam, whereby we shall be talking about HG, or it can start as a wet steam, then it ends as a superheated steam. So the, those are the conditions that you are going to have. So in this case, uh, okay, that is the information. And uh, what we're gonna have here, calculate the pressure of steam before throttling in kilopascals. That, that is the absolute pressure, the pressure that affects our weight steam in this case. So from the barometer reading and the manometer reading, we can obtain the pressure of the steam before throttling, which is the absolute pressure in this case, all right? So that's 3.11. So the absolute pressure will be given as the barometer reading. If you are dealing with the calorimeters, you add to the manometer reading, all right? So it's gonna to the manometer reading times uh, 101,325 over 760. All right, if you are dealing with the condensers, you are going to subtract for a condition that you're working with a condenser. But if you're dealing with a cal uh, calorimeter, you are going to add the barometer and the manometer reading together. So the barometer reading is at uh, 685 and 665 for the manometer reading. So you're gonna add uh, these two, so that's 685 plus 665, whatever that you're gonna have here, you multiply it to 101,325. All right, so you're going to obtain the pressure in kilopascal in this case, all right? So that is our absolute pressure, which is the pressure before throttling. So that was gonna give us 179,985, uh, so on in kilopascals. So, if we are to use this value later on, like it, it, that definitely when you are to calculate the dryness fraction, we are going to consider this pressure because we need the values that will correspond to that pressure. So in order for us to be able to calculate, we are going to approximate this to the, to the nearest whole number. Since 
from our steam tables, we do not have decimals for pressure. They are only all numbers. So we approximate this gonna change to 180 uh, kilopascals. So the, the purpose of changing this is for us to use it uh, on this question 3.12. But for this pressure alone, you can even leave your answer like this, it's fine. All right, so this is what we have guys. Uh, we are asked now to calculate the dryness fraction. All right, whenever you are dealing with a, calori a calorimeter, a calorimeter is going to give us, uh, we are going to obtain the dryness fraction from the concept that the, the we, we talk about before throttling, we've got the enthalpy there, which is of H wet. And after throttling, we've got H uh, soup, which is for the superheated steam. So these two before and after, they are equal. So we are simply saying the enthalpy before throttling is equal to the enthalpy after throttling. That is the condition. When you are dealing with a condenser, uh, we, uh, when you are talking about a condenser, you shall be talking about a condition where they will be asking you to calculate uh, maybe the mass of water, this and that. Like I said, it's one and the same thing. There, you shall be talking about the heat that is being emitted by steam to the heat that is being absorbed by water. That is the difference that we are talking about. The same a concept or the same idea of the calculation is the one that we are having here, but this time we are talking okay. about the enthalpy. So we are saying the enthalpy before throttling in this case, uh, before uh, throttling, all right, is equal to the enthalpy after throttling. Now let us just write H. Uh, in short, so you're gonna just write H in short after uh, throttling in this case. All right, so that is the condition that you're gonna work with. So we're talking about before and after, before and after. So before, what is it that we have? Before, we have got H wet. After, it is a superheated steam. So sometimes we can start with H wet, we end with an H wet, it can be like that. Or sometimes you start with H wet, then you end with a dry steam. It can be like that, but this time we are ending up with a superheated steam. So how do you calculate H wet? Remember, H wet is equal to HF for water, for water, which is HF plus X times HFG for evaporation. All right, so that's where we've got our dryness fraction in this case. Remember, you're supposed to calculate uh, the dryness fraction which is equal to the enthalpy of the superheated. This is the specific, we are talking about the specific enthalpy. So it's going to be Hg plus the specific heat capacity of superheated steam times uh, superheated temperature. Then we've got the saturation temperature. All right, so as we know that these two will be taken at a certain pressure. So this is at pressure after throttling at P2 at P2, which is equal to, do we have P2 in this case? We are given the pressure after throttling is 100 uh, kilopascal. So that is, we've got uh, 190 kilopascal there. And TSS is given at that pressure, at this pressure, this is the pressure at, of the superheated steam. So this is the temperature of the superheated steam. So that's our TSS. So our TSS here is equal to, uh, 110 degrees Celsius, all right? So that's 110 degrees Celsius, this one. All right, so we need to find TS, which is the one for the saturation temperature at this pressure after throttling. Then before throttling, for us to find HF and HG, for us to have this, we are going to use the pressure before throttling. So that's at P1 before throttling, uh, that at absolute pressure. Remember, we calculated the pressure of steam before throttling, the pressure of steam before throttling. That is the one that we calculated here. So that's why we, we rounded off this to 180 so that we can be able to use it on our steam table. So that's at 180 kilopascal. So you're gonna find this at P1, which is 180 uh, kilopascal. So as you can see, it's just a direct substitution into the formula, if you understand this. If you are dealing with a condenser, expect the same type of equation, but it will be from where? From the heat that is being emitted to the heat that is being absorbed. Then they will maybe ask you to calculate the mass of water, this and that, or the temperature, uh, or the output temperature and so forth. We shall talk about that as we are revising. I just hope 
we are going to have uh, a person that is uh, similar to the approach that I'm talking about so that at least we can revise along together. We can actually revise along uh, that type of a person that I'm talking about on the condensers. And also I said, the, for the pressure here, you add if you're dealing with a calorimeter, but if you're doing with a condenser, you subtract. That is the difference that you're gonna have. So as you can see, guys, we can calculate uh, by substituting our values. Let us check uh, from our steam table at 180 kilopascal. So we need the pressure, all right? Pressure here, we're gonna go under the pressure in kilopascal, so that's at uh, 180. So at 180 here, we are going to obtain HF and HFG. We need HF there. Uh, that is the corresponding HF. It's 491. Uh, HFG is 2,221. That is at uh, 180 kilopascal. All right. So you're going to substitute this uh, in place of HF. At 180 kilopascal. We saw that our HF there was 491. So that's 491 plus X times uh, HG, which was, uh, or HFG, sorry, sorry, where am I? Okay, sorry guys for that. This is HFG, HFG there. I'm actually saying uh, the correct thing, but writing the wrong thing here. All right, so this, uh, this is X times HFG, all right, which is uh, gonna be, Two two one one. All right, so that's the value that we had here. Uh, two two one one. Uh, which is for HFG. All right, then our HF. Okay, so that's it. Uh, we substitute on the other side for the superheated steam. As as I said, we are going to need the value of HG that is at the pressure after throttling, which is P2 at 190. So this time we need 190 and also the saturation temperature at 190. So at 190 kilopascal here, the saturation temperature TS is corresponding at 190, under 190 here. This is where we are going to obtain our values. So under 190, the saturation temperature is 118,6. So that's 118. Uh, comma six in this case, uh, at, at this pressure, all right, that is 190, guys. all right, let me check here, um, actually taking from the wrong information here, guys, sorry for that, where am I obtaining the 190, this is 120, guys, I am tired, the way I'm writing here yes, simply means, simply shows I am actually tired. All right. Anyway, let us see. Sorry for that. This is 120 kilopascal. All right. That is uh, after throttling there. So we need at 120. I'm seeing that my preparation and what I'm having now is different. All right. So we need at 120, not 190. So that will be at 120 here. So you're going to have the same thing. Uh, all right. So that's it. Uh, the saturation temperature there, which is at 120, which is uh, 104,8, uh, 104,8 degrees Celsius, and also the value of Hg, all right? So we need the value of Hg here, not Hfg, but Hg, this one, which is uh, 2,683. So we are taking at the pressure uh, if, uh, after throttling, which is 120 in this case, all right? So that's our TS and our HG. So let us substitute our HG. Uh, in this case, we got our HG as uh, 2,683 plus the specific uh, heat capacity of the superheated steam, which is uh, 2,1 kilojoule. This is per, kil per kg degrees Celsius. We are working with temperature in degrees Celsius, not in Kelvin, all right? So that's 2,1 there, but it does not affect us. So that's 2,1 into TSS, which is for the superheated steam, uh, the one at the pressure of 120 uh, on our information here, which is 110. So we've got the information, which is complete there. That's 110 degrees Celsius minus the TS, from the pressure of 120, we saw that our TS was, um, 
Yet TS one hundred and four comma eight. So you're gonna have one zero four comma eight. That's uh, one zero four comma eight degrees Celsius. All right. So that's it. We can be able to calculate uh, x in this case. All right. So let us simplify. That's gonna be four ninety one plus two two one x. All right. Two two one x is equal to. If you combine everything on the right hand side, uh, we are going to obtain. Uh, 2,693,92. So we can transpose 491 to the right-hand side so that it can be a negative if we, tra if we transpose to this side. All right, so meaning to say, we are going to subtract this to the other side. We remain with 2211x is equal to, uh, if we subtract 491 on this side, if we subtract uh, 491, we are going to obtain with uh, 2,000, 202,92, then we can divide by this 2211 so that we obtain the value of x, All right? So that's gonna give us the value of x, uh, which was gonna be 0, 0.99634 and so on. So that's 0, 0.99623 three decimal places, All right? So that's the condition, that's the condition. So as you can see, uh, as long you are working with a calorimeter, uh, mostly you're gonna be asked on the dryness fraction to compose you are talking about something that is used to measure the dryness fraction. So we need to know about the enthalpy before throttling and the enthalpy after throttling. So this one for after, it's gonna maybe it, it was it was for it was uh, a condition that it was also wet, the output is also wet. We are not gonna use this formula. Maybe the, the, the output or after throttling, the steam is dry. It means we're not going to have this. We're just going to have Hg. So it depends with the output. At after throttling, how is the steam given? That is uh, the one that is going to determine your formula. So you do not say because of this formula that we have used now, I'm going to use the same formula to answer another question. No, you have to check the type of steam that is the one that you're having after throttling, how is it even? But before throttling, your steam is going to be wet steam. All right, so we shall check another question so that we, we spot the differences as we are revising for our exam.